Complain about what God is doing, yeah. not just with the men, but with mankind. That's the truth. See, I mean, I, I, I really am. So I want to have a quick word of prayer, and then we're just going to get on with this. Heavenly Father, I want to come right now in Jesus' name. Just thank you for another opportunity to be used of you. Lord, I pray for your name, sake, that you would cleanse me of all any wrong that would hinder the flow of your spirit, and that you would give me grace so that people would hear and see you and not me. Lord, let your word go out, for we promise that it yeah. will not return to you, Lord. And Lord, we need to hear a word from you today. We do, Lord. So we thank you in advance for what you've done and what you're about to do. And we count all of this done in the strong name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 Wow, we're in a good spot. And I don't know about you, but I've heard some things already that really pricked my spirit and let me know that. I'm in the place where God will have me to be because we've already been warned about the danger of coming to church, sitting and listening to message after message after message and never really incorporating any of it to our spirit. I just heard pastors say that there are many that have went to church, went to church, went to church, went to church and was on their way to hell from church seats. Okay? So then here's what, 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 what got me. And I'm, well, I kind of want to preface this a little bit because last week we heard a powerful word from the prophet. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But even before I talk about that, I want to first give honor to Pastor and Sister Trina. I thank God yes, for them. Lord Jesus. Yeah, they have been such a blessing in my yes, life and encouragement. And just to see him get up here fired up for the Lord and give Man. God praise. You know, I, I, God said, who's the most committed person you know? And my mind thought about my past. Because I be around him every day and I'm watching this guy. He's ministering 24-7. You know what I mean? I, sometimes I be like, take a break, man, but he can't. You know, because the Lord got it and he's on fire for the Lord. And that's encouraging for all men to have somebody in your life that you can see God moving in and that you can know that they're genuinely serving God out of a pure heart. We all need that. You know, and then I thank God for, for Brother Brother Prophet because like he hit me with a good one last week. And I thank God for when he do things, you know, because, you know, he says that out of the mouth of two or more witnesses, everything is established, right? Yeah. And me and Brother Ron was talking last week, and we don't normally talk all the time, but he had called me. And the, the thing I had to continue with was like, it was like a twofold thing, because he called me to tell me something. But I had, the Lord was using me to remind him of something, because, you know, the message that he talked about last week, does anybody remember what he talked about? He warned us about the fact that Jesus was walking through the candlesticks. Right, right. And when he first said that, I went, ooh, we? Yeah. Because, you know, that's judgment. Yes, yeah. When Jesus is walking through the church, it's yeah. because there's judgment coming. Right. You know, and you can look at life situations, you can look at what's going on in our bar, and you can look at what's going on in our world, and in our families, and it's undoubted that we're getting closer to the return of our Lord and Savior. Yeah. See, and the thing that he told us last week that really hit was that he said that Jesus was inspecting the church and he wasn't just looking at leadership. He was looking at us. The whole body of Christ. And here's the thing of confirmation. When I left out of here, uh, I had to drop my wife off and I want to give thanks to God for her. And, and let me tell you something. Anybody that's ready to give up, I'm going to tell you, if you keep faith, you keep trusting in God, God can fix that thing. Yes, he will. Let me tell you something. That woman over there, I've been with her and soon will be 50 years. What? Yeah, that shit, we've been married for 40. And we've been together for 50 be next year. Wow. And you know what? God is so good, he's so faithful because all that the locust stole, God is a restorer. See, so the love that we share right now, it's just as fired up and better than it was when we was kids. And I thank God for that. You know? So I, I want to throw that out there because somebody may be about to give up. Somebody may be on the, uh, uh, on the edge. But you know God is not only a keeper, he's a restorer of all that is going to But we need to know that. We need to have faith. We need to trust God. We need to let him work in our lives. Because if you do that, you can do anything but what? Faith. My God will not fail. He can. He got all power. And you know every situation. I'm so thankful to know that the judge is at the double. Back to the story. See, when I left here Sunday, I dropped wifey off and then I went to go take care of a couple items. And you know, I heard on the radio, you know what the guy was preaching about? 
Jesus walking through the landscape. And it was Earl Lucer, a guy of a different persuasion, and his church is in Chicago. Yeah. So here we got somebody from a different persuasion yeah. talking the same thing that God was talking here with us. Great, great, great. And the warning was that judgment begins today. Yeah. See, yeah. when you hear the word of God, it says, harden not your heart. Right. You understand? And, and seven times in, in Revelation, the revelator said, he that hath an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Yeah. See, we got this thing kind of twisted. We come out doing religion. Yeah. You understand? No, we doing religion. You know what I mean? That's something that you do routinely. You do superstitiously. Yeah. It's like a list you check off. Yeah, I went to church. Yeah, I did this. Yeah, I did that. But then we still go back to doing our regular thing, right? Yeah. And so our, our theme for men's month is men ascending to be like Christ. Now, that's wow, what I took. Wow, that's good. Okay, men are sinning to be like Christ. And the text is coming from Philippians 3, uh, 3 verses 13 through 15. And I'm going to ask you to stand and honor God's word as I read the text. And remember again, I'm going to say, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the church. Right? Okay, so and I'm reading from the TPT because I just kind of like how it flows. So I want you to read it in your Bible because whatever translation you're reading, that's the best one for you. See, because it's important that we share in the reading of the Word of God because the Word of God is what changes us. The Word of God is what revives us. The Word of God is the thing that He utilizes to transform us into the likeness of His Son. So again, we're looking at Philippians chapter 3, verses 15, uh, 13 through 15. And this is what it says. It says, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all the past as I have fastened my heart to the future instead. Verse 14 says, I run straight for the divine in invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. Ooh. Then verse 15 says, so let all who are fully mature have the same passion and if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, yeah. God will reveal it to them. Yeah. Ooh. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of my God shall last forever. You can be seated. Again, we're talking about men ascending to be like Christ. See, here's the thing. We in the church, and in the church, you got people on all different levels. Yep. You know, you got some people, because like, if you never even accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this may sound like foolishness to you. Correct. See, because the Bible says that the natural man does not receive the things of God. Correct. It's spiritually discerned. Right? And matter of fact, this is what Paul said in Ephesians 2, 1 through 4. He says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just as the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. Oh. He is a spirit at work in the heart of those who refuse to obey God. Yeah. Verse 3 says, all of us used to live that way, following the passion and desires and the inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were objects of God's anger, just like everyone else. So whether you in the church or whether you don't even know Jesus, we all had the same starting point. See, the Bible says that all have come short and fallen short of the glory of God, right? And because of that, we all needed to save. Yes, we did. See, but here's the problem. We, even in the church, because this letter from Paul was to the church, right? To the church at Philippi, right? Yeah. Uh, even in the church, we tend to like want to judge ourselves by somebody else. Come on now. We don't want to judge ourselves by the, the standard, the gold standard, right? See, the gold standard is Jesus Christ. See? He was the, the perfect representation of God walking with us. Yes, he was. Matter of fact, his name is Emmanuel, God with us. See, and, and it's a futuristic thing because in the end we know that even when heaven comes to earth, then God will be among his people. And because of that, we won't need the sun, the moon, and the stars because we will be radiated by his presence. Right. It's something about being in the presence of the living God. That, that number one, there's peace, there's joy, there's all these things. But in the presence of God, it really points out just how shallow, just how lax, just 
where we're at in our walk with God. Come on, sir. See, the Spirit, is one of the things of the Holy Spirit is to lead us into all truth. And I am convinced that the first truth that he leads us in to where are we at in relationship to God. See, and I, I, parted, I started out that way because when you want to figure out, how, are you ascending? Are you even trying? Do you have a want to? See, Scripture says that we should work out our own salvation with fear and trembling because it's God at work in you, giving you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yes, it is. So the idea ain't even yours. Thank you, Jesus. See, if you came to church today, yeah. you know, I mean, if you're not a child and your mama drug you out here, which... I thank God for moms that still drag their kids to church. Yes, sir. You know, because it's in those instances that you get to hear the word of God. And we know that faith comes by hearing. And hearing what? God. The word of God. Yeah. God gives to every man a measure of faith. But it's as we hear his promises, as we hear his love, as we hear all of the things that he's already done. Thank you. You know, because the fear of hell ain't the thing that turns us around. It's the love of God that causes us to repent. You know, if, you, if you're honest, you know, when you was doing all that you was doing, you was like saying, well, you know, I'll worry about that tomorrow. You understand? You weren't worried about going to hell tonight when somebody don't call you and tell you slip on by. You know, you weren't worried if Jesus caught you when you was in the midst of shooting craps or whatever. You know, you're trying to hit. Right. And then you saying, Lord, help. <laughs> Sitting all the time, hand over fist, still sin, and still invoking the name of the Lord. That's just how twisted we were. You know, I know I ain't the only somebody. See, so we all started at level ground. See, at the cross, it's level ground. See, Jesus came to die for all of us. You, me, the guy outside, the guy you hate, the one that you can't stand, Jesus came to die for them too. See, and, and the problem is that in the body of Christ, and this is why it's so important that we understand that we, we, we need to examine ourselves. See, see, we, we need to examine ourselves. See, first of all, we need to examine ourselves to make sure that we're in the faith, right? And, and see, that's an important thing about it. That's why what my brother said last week really got me because when he talked about Jesus walking through the lampstands and, and examining the church, I heard him reminding us in 1 Corinthians 11, 31, 32. He says, but if we examine ourselves, we will not be judged by God in this way. That's right. Yet when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned among the world, with the world. See, it's a good thing when God comes and checks you out. See, and so often we want to turn that out. We want to shut that down. You know, when somebody giving you a word, somebody giving you a scripture, We'll put them on the don't call, don't answer. Oh. You know, somebody trying to minister to you, somebody giving you the word of God, somebody like trying to correct you when you doing stuff that you know ain't right. Come on, that's good, sir. They're the ones that we don't want to talk to. You know, it's something about the light. You know, we're just don't like the light. You <laughs> turn on the light, they will scare. <laughs> You know, unless, oh unless you just got one of them really bold. You know, somehow you got them bold and they're like, hey, you better cut that light down, fella. <laughs> you know, because you don't just let it go too far. You know what I mean? They just are too old. Now, if your life is filled with sin like that, then the Bible says that your conscience will be seared like a hot iron. See, and, and you know something about when you get a nerve ending seared with a hot iron? It don't feel no more. See, so the convicting of the Holy Spirit, if it's not moving you, if it's not touching you, if you can't feel God calling you to himself, if you can't feel God saying you need to come on up a little higher, well, then maybe, well, just maybe, you became dull in your hearing and your conscience has been seared with a hot iron. You know, third degree burns don't hurt. It's only when they debreed you and you get down to the clean, to the new tissue, the new development, that you begin to feel pain. Come on, yeah. See, there's some things that God wants to do in our lives, first of all, as men. See, but when we're talking about men, we're talking about mankind. You know, as a whole. See, all of us. See, women, men, women... Uh, one of the greatest gifts God ever gave. I love Amen. I love it too. Yeah. You know, that's always taking me back to James Brown, you know, but I love it too. Like, hey, well, it's a man's word, but it would be nothing without a woman or a girl. 
I love it, I love it, I love it, right? Hey, that's funny about me. I love me some female company. God is good. He knew that a man should not be alone. And yet he gave us a standard that we should be living to. Yes, sir. See, but the problem is, is that many of us, instead of trying to live like Jesus said to live, we trying to be like LeBron, or trying to be yeah. like Mike, we trying to be like the drug dealer on the corner, you know, who seemingly got it going on. No, he you don't. Know, scripture said that David said in Psalm 73, he said, I almost slipped. Come on. Yes, sir. Because I was envious of the evildoers. Because yeah. it looked like they didn't have no trouble. Yeah. They were yeah. dripping with gold. Yeah. They had the pride going on. Yeah. They had seven or eight different cars. Right. Party over here, party over right. there. Big old fat knot. Right. You know. That's good. But you yes, know, sir. when you look into it, it ain't got no peace. I remember how it was when I was trying to run the street. Boy, every time the police came around. <laughs> and then when the Lord came into my life, the police arrived by said, How you doing, officer? How can I help you? <laughs> you know, I, I got like one of the mother fellows once the Lord came into my life. I'm not scared of the popo no more. You know, because you know, when you're doing right, then, you know, you could. That's right. Most of the time. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, there's devils in every situation. You know, it ain't about race, it ain't about color, it ain't about your economic standards. It's about your walk with Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. See, if you ain't walking close to the Lord, I might not want to be around you neither. That's right. true. See, it ain't about who we are, color, or none of that. You know, God loves all people. Yeah. He already demonstrated that. He said that every trace, every tribe, every generation is going to be represented in heaven. Wow. And you know what? Ain't no... Ain't no Hispanic section, ain't no right. white section, right. ain't no Chinese right. section, right. ain't no Negro section. No, he ain't got no grandkids, he only got kids. So if you're a child of the Lord, Jesus said, I went to prepare a place for you. And in my father's house, there's many, many yes. So I got something to look forward to. You know, it's hard down here right now, but I'm a property owner in heaven. I don't own nothing, but let me manage some stuff. And, and if you love God like I love God, then that's what we should be aspiring for. Yeah, to get to that place to where we are in the presence of the Lord forever and ever and don't have to worry about none of this stuff that's driving us bonkers down here right now. You know, God, is, I can't wait to that moment when there's no tears, there's no crying, there's no death, there's no BPU, there's none of that, you know. I can't wait till I get to that place where God is freeing us. But, there's still yet stuff we need to do. And, and I have to break it down like that because you know what? This is like an individual decision. We're talking corporately, but this is an individual decision. That's why he said, work out your own salvation with fear and tremor. Yes, sir. Men, you can't work out your wife's salvation. Mama, you can't work out your kids' salvation. You can lead them to Christ. You can introduce them to the Savior. But in the end, everybody got to accept the grace of God for themselves. Now, you see, the good thing about that, and I, I've talked about it a little bit in Sunday school, is because there's something amazing about God's grace. You know, the old people used to sing that song about amazing yes. grace, how sweet the sound. Yes. Say the sinner like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I see. But you know something? I saw something in the Word of God this week, and, and it just like triggered something in me. You understand? Because you know, like all of us got stuff that we that that, that God is need to work out of us. You know, I, I, He's talking to the church. See, let me, let me look at the text for a second. Because so, see, Paul said this. Here. Like, check this out. See, I'm gonna back up just a little bit. Because uh, like this guy right here, see, many of us want to talk about what we're doing in the natural. And I heard somebody say that earlier today, you know, about, you know, we focus on the temporal. We focus on what's in your 401k, you know, what's, you know, what's, what's, how much money you got in this account? You know, how many car credit cards do you have? You know, did you got the big, big screen TV or the almost big screen TV? You know, I had a brother say, I had a brother say he went to his, 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 his brother's house and said, and said the whole wall was a TV. Wow. 
Oh, wait. I'm okay with my little screen. <laughs> but you know, some people need to big, big, big. You understand? And, and, but you know, but we have a tendency to want to make that like our life's goal and mission. And especially like as men, you know, we'll work three jobs, we'll rob, we'll steal, we'll hook up with Junebug, who got the love, yeah. and, 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 and never realize that God ain't happy with that. No, sir. Right. If you think God happy with you hooking up with Junebug on the low right. you have never read Psalms 50. Uh-oh. See, in Psalms 50, around by verse 16, some God said that you saw a thief and you made friends with him. Uh -oh. wow. We're talking about moving and living up to Christ's standards. Yeah. We ain't talking about, you know, like the hood idea. You know, because in the hood, you know, it's okay to get food stamps from yes, so and so and so and so. Yes, you know, and, and we're gonna cut them down to the half. You know, I'm, I'm only giving you 50% of that. Knowing that they got kids they need to feed, but they selling, you know, wow. we don't care. It's all about what we can do with ours. I know we're gonna get real quiet about that. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you get that meal said that you know they just stole. Yeah, you know, you get them sausages and them, them, them sirloins for, you know, like, the package say sell eight dollars a, 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 a pound, but, you know, I'm only going to give you three dollars because I know you're going to earn it. Right. <laughs> we get them joints that fell off the truck. Right. <laughs> That, but the truck was, was locked. <laughs> you know how we do in the hood? That's not living up to God's standards. All right. Not for believers. We live in like the world when we operate in that place. See? And see, if you think God is pleased with that, you never read Psalms 50. Ooh, wait a minute. Let me give y'all a little bit of that. This is free. I'll take verse 18. I, I, I wish we had a mic. I'd let you read it. But anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it to Psalms mm -hmm, 50. Because this, 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 we need this. You know, when you talk about living up to God's standards. See, okay, go check this out. Verse 18. So it says at 18. I thought it was 16, but you brought it back. Well, see, here's where I want to start at 18. Because check this out. See, I'm in 16. This is what it says 16. He says, now I speak to the wicked. Listen to what I have to say to you. What right do you have to presume to speak for me and claim my covenant promises as yours? See, I have to start right there because you know in the church we fooling with Jim Bull and them too. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And yeah. I said, the Lord blessed me. The child. Lord blessed me. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Cliff. Oh yeah. I don't hear folks say it. I might have said it once or twice myself. <laughs> look at the look at God. <laughs> yeah, look at God. He's a good father. Yeah. But I'm gonna say it again. He said, now, I'm gonna say it again. He says, now I speak to the wicked. Listen to what I have to say to you. What right do you presume to speak for me and claim my covenant promises as yours? Verse 17 says, For you have hated my instructions wow. and disregarded my words, throw them away as worthless. <laughs> when you say, I know the Lord said this, but I got to do that, you act like He ain't God Almighty. Yeah. You know, that's just like that guy. You remember He said, Well, it, it, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He will direct your path. That's like you driving down the freeway at 112 miles per hour, and you see the state right. trooper on the side and you wave at it. <laughs> Don't break, just wave. Mm. And then now you're wondering why you face down in the dirt with your hands behind your back. Because at 112, you ain't getting no ticket, you going to jail. See, some of us are living like that. Some of us are operating from that mentality of that our God knows my heart. You know, he, he, I'm, I'm going to do it and then I'm going to ask God to forgive me. She looks so good. I just got to creep on by there. God knows. Right. Her husband ain't doing her right now. She right. So Dig it out. Dig it out. What? No. You know, and then we, we all on porno and all that, you know. 
but God knows this ain't acting right. So, you know. What? Jesus said, if you lust for a woman, you've committed adultery already. Yes, That's what Jesus said. See, God's standards are much higher than what we are willing to accept. And that's the thing that blows my mind about us as a people. I start with me. You know, as a people, God wants so much more for us. He saved us, gave us work to do because he sees great value in our lives. And we are shortchange that in our heart. But back to the story. Uh, verse 17 says, uh, no, no, I'm going to go to 18. It's because i got to get to that one part. It says, you forgot to condemn the thief or the adulterer. You are their friends running alongside them into darkness. The sins of your mouth multiply evil, and you have a lifestyle of lies, and you are devoted to deceit as you speak against others, even slandering those of your own household. Verse 21 says, all of this you have done and I kept silent. So you thought that I was just like you, sanctified, sanctioned and evil. But now I bring you to my court home but now. and speak out clearly my charges before you. Wow. Verse 22, this is your last chance, my wow. final warning. Your time is good. Turn away from all this evil or the next time you hear from me will be when I'm coming to pass judgment upon you. I will snatch you away and no one will be there to help you escape my judgment. That's like when the brother said that Jesus was walking through the lampstands, my skin began to cry. I was like, you know, you get that tightened up in the back. You know, y'all know what I mean when the muscle tightened up real tight. We like, ooh. <laughs> You know everything ain't right. Not. Don't be trying to lie like everything is good. You know, we got some feelings, we got some emotions, we got some stuff that we have not allowed God to deal with. Yeah. And he wants to deal with it so that we can be set free, so we can do the work that he's put in our hands. We wonder why we ain't got no power in our household. It's because we're living lawlessly, we're doing things that God does not approve. We're living together, we're not married, because that's what the world says is okay. You gotta try that thing out or you get hissed. The devil lives a lot. God's word ain't changed. The grass will the flower fade, but the word of my God shall last forever. He ain't playing about that stuff. But we have accepted a lower standard than what God has offered us. And that's like when we talk about men ascending to the standard of Christ, we got some stepping up to do. All of us. See, when you want to put all this on this and that, see, now I'm back to my, my original text. This is what Paul said. When you want to talk about things like in the physical and talk about what you got going on and, you know, all of this, I'm, you know, I'm the deacon at the church and, you know, I open up and I close and I have to monitor and, you know, I teach a class and I do all this. Check out what Paul says. He said, says, he says, he said first of all, I want to start at verse 1. We're Philippians chapter 3. So if you're tracking with me, I ain't going to be too long because I've got a couple, three points I'm going to give you and we're going to move up out of here. You know, because I know, I, Tony, go crank up the car. Or just hit the button. Anyway, it says, my beloved ones, don't ever <laughs> limit your joy or fail to rejoice in the wonderful experience of knowing our Lord Jesus. I don't mind repeating what I've already written you because it protects you. Beware of those religious hypocrites Ooh. who teach that you should be circumcised to please God for we have already experienced heart circumcision and we worship God in the power and the freedom of the Holy Spirit, not in laws and religious duty. We are those who boast in what Jesus Christ has done and not in what we can accomplish in our own strength. I want to start right there. See, God says that he ain't worried about the stuff you're doing if you're disobeying him. He don't take no pleasure in sacrifice. Obedience is better. That's what he told in Sam. Sacrifice is better than, than works. So if I'm not living according to God's standards, but I'm going to do all this stuff in Jesus' name, he said, I'm a hypocrite. I'm a play actor. Play actor. That's what hypocrite is. That's, that's somebody just playing a role. It's not what's in your heart. See, but see, we can't get our hearts right. 
we cooperate with the Holy Spirit. See, the, the grace of God has come to all of us that are saved, and the grace of God teaches us and instructs us on how to withstand from ungodly desires. See, God not only gives you unmerited favor, but in this unmerited favor, he gives us the understanding and the word unto to do the things that he's called us to do. So he done already did the work. We got to cooperate. We got to humbly submit ourselves before him, acknowledging that, Lord, I need you every day, every hour. Can't get along. It was God that took me off drugs. It was God that made me walk right. It was yeah. God that made me treat my family right. Yeah. It's God that helped me to love people that I can't stand yeah. in the natural world. It's God that makes me get up and go to work every day, even when I don't feel like it. It's God that keeps me on the wheel. And he'll do the same for you. See, but as long as you operate in what you can do, Right. right there. A little bit more. Now I gotta give you this, gotta give you this. Okay, so check this out. He says, verse 4 says, that it's true that I once relied on all that I had became. Mm -hmm. See, Paul was being honest. Now we ain't talking about Paul, we ain't talking about Saul, we talking about Paul. Yeah. Now not only that, if you know anything about this text, this guy, where was he at when he wrote this? Anybody? Yeah. He was in prison for Jesus Christ. Yeah. He was almost at the end of his ministry. Yeah. You understand? This is the guy that done wrote, he wrote 13 books out of 27 in the New Testament. And really, you could give him credit for 14 because Hebrews is so much Paulinian till you can't even, it's hard to discern that he didn't write it himself. So if he didn't write it, it's somebody that he mentored and he discipled because they gave almost word for word in language and style and everything his message. But it's this guy who admitted that I used to rely on all of that that I did in the natural. Yeah. See, and he goes on to say, I had a reason to boast and impress people with my accomplishments um, uh, more than more than, than others, for my pedigree was impeccable. <laughs> Paul had it going on. See, now I'm just going to break it down to you. Number one, this guy was the top student of Gamaliel, who was the top teacher of the Pharisees of his day. He was Summa cum laude. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. He was numero uno in his class. And this is what he said. Check this out. Verse 5. He says, I was born a true Hebrews of the heritage of Israel as a son of a Jewish man from the tribe of Benjamin. He trying to let y'all know he wasn't no half-breed. Right. He wasn't a Samaritan. Right. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. His mama was a Hebrew, his daddy was a Hebrew, and they came out of the line of Abraham. Right. All the way right down to Benjamin. Which meant he was of the tribe and of the southern kingdom, the tribe of Judah. And the, the southern kingdom. He, he just laid it out. My pedigree. Okay, because like in the Jewish culture, that was important. Yes, it is. You know, like, it ain't like us, you know. We go down our family tree, it's all kind of the size. <laughs> right? I came from a little town that's like Paisley Place. Everybody was back door. You know, you boy, we, we. I don't even do that ancestry thing because I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it I don't want to know. I am who I am. <laughs> I am who I am. <laughs> That's why I'm so grateful about God's grace. See, See so and then check this out. He says, I was circumcised on the eighth day. That's by law when they were supposed to get circumcised. On the eighth day, a Jewish boy was supposed to get circumcised. That was the law. So he says, from the day I was born, they've been keeping the law with me. Okay, on the eighth day, I was circumcised. Okay, well, man, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He says, and then, and I was raised in the strict tradition of Orthodox Judaism, living a separated and a devout, devout life as a Pharisee. And concerning the righteousness of the Torah, the first five books, he says, no one surpassed me. I was without a peer. Could touch Paul. You know, I, I, what I was, I can't touch this. <laughs> Paul was that man. He was all of that three bags of chips. In his arena. Yeah. 
And then he didn't leave it there. He went on and says, furthermore, as a fiery defender of the truth, I persecuted the Messianic believers with religious zeal. Yeah. Paul was like many of us, thinking they was doing the work for God, but were caught in the snare of the devil so that we would do his way of bidding and we didn't know. Just like he can write in 2 Timothy that we shouldn't argue, but we should be patient and teach all men pre-adventure that God will give enlightenment and we can free ourselves from the snare of the devil who has took us captive to do his will. Yes. Many of us, under the sound of my voice, is operating for the enemy. Yes. Oh, yeah. You stirring up some stuff in the church house. That's right. Thank you for operating for Jesus, but you got attitude when somebody ain't singing your song. When somebody is like, well, you know, we jealous, we upset, we, you know, we confused, you know. You still working in the flesh, baby. You know, you still, you still operating with some demonic activity when you get mad when God's work is going on and, 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 and you mad by how God laid it out. See, he's sovereign. Sovereign means he's in charge. And you want to know something else, James Brown? You said, pay the cost to be the boss. Yeah. Jesus paid the cost to be the boss. Right. He's the one who died on Calvary. He's the one that can beat him all night long. He's the one who freely gave himself up to the cohort, which is 600 soldiers, to let them smack him around for you and for me. Didn't have to do it. Freely did it. Freely. Did it for you and for me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He paid the cost to be the boss. He purchased the church with his own blood. He sets us in places that gives him glory. And if you don't like that, you should pray to him. Ask him to clean me up so that I can be used for you. See, because when we humble ourselves before him, then he exalts us in due time. Some of us ain't ready yet. You know, that's plenty of time that I had to sit back and take low. Wow. You know, and, and I learned to appreciate that because yeah. in that position, now God was working some stuff out of me. Yeah. And see, you talk about ascending to be on God's standards. We got that's some stuff God got to get out of us. Some of this fleshly stuff that we want to operate in is demonic. Yeah. You can't get up in front of the church and be operating like that, man. No! Dude, you're a wreck it, man. No. You know, new people coming in and they seeing us blowing up on each other, going crazy on each other. They're like, these folks ain't no different than the folks down at the club. Oh, yeah. You know, when, when, when we got new people in our midst and we just blasting one another, man, come on. We still need the Holy Spirit to work on us. Yes, yes Jesus. See, and Paul admitted that. He said, I have not yet obtained. Yeah. See, so verse 7, he says, he says, yeah, all of the accomplishments that I once took credit for, I have now forsaken them, and I regard it all as nothing compared to the life of experiencing Jesus Christ as my Lord. Yeah. To truly know him meant letting go of everything from my past and throwing all my boasting on the garbage heap. It is like a pile of manure to me now so that I may be enriched in the reality of knowing Jesus Christ and embrace him as Lord in all of his greatness. Now, everybody in here at some point done changed the baby's diaper, right? How many of us want to go back and look at that thing after we get done with it? And they got the genie now, and you just throw it in there and so, because I don't want to look at that. I don't want to smell it no more. I don't want to be around it. Right. Once I got cleaned up, I don't let that go. Yeah. All of the stuff that Paul had, remember summa cum laude? Yeah. Yeah. Number one in his class, can't touch this? He dropped all of that to know Jesus. Yeah. What are we willing to drop to know Jesus? What are we willing to give up to get a closer walk with the Lord? Oh, See, because that's the challenge. Yeah. You know what? And, and, and I know it breaks... Pastor and Sister Trina and, and all of us in ministry's heart because, you know, we, we really like standing between you and the Holy God. You know, I mean, God has entrusted your development to leadership. Yes, sir. Thank you. You know, I mean, and it's hurtful when you study ministering to people, study praying for people, study providing tools to work some stuff out, and people won't even look at it. 
They're not even open to the work of God in their lives. And yet, still come to church religiously, going home, still arguing and fussing and fighting. God don't want to fix He want to fix that. God want to set us free. He came to loose, to destroy the works of the devil. Why are we still walking around with grave clothes on? Come on. What's, what's the deal? Y'all like being mummified? Because <laughs> God came, Jesus came, he manifests himself to set us free. Why will you not let him work in your in your marriage? Why will you not let him work with your your, your mental capacity? Why will you not let him work with your attitudes and your hang-ups? Why will you not give all of this stuff to him that he wants to fix? Especially if you're trying to ascend to the status of Jesus Christ. No, we be down in the dirt. Talking like we want to be all that for Jesus. Right. Come on, man. Come on, man. So let me let me move on because I know people get tired of me. But anyway, check this out. Here's where we at. Second Timothy three one through four says this. He says, "You know this. Uh, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider." nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. My God. Stay away from people like that. Wow. That's what Paul was talking to. He said, stay away from folks. See, too many people play in church. See, and, and, and that's why you, you come in week after week, you hear all these messages. You God is pouring out his spirit. He's using vessel after vessel. It's okay if you don't like me. I get it. You know, I mean I ain't all that like it for so I understand. But you know, this great people have been up here giving the word of God. We've heard tremendous messages, very challenging things, encouraging us to, to, to surrender to God, to allow His Spirit to work on us. Give your all to the Master. He promised that He would pay. Yes. And we'll walk out here and pick our stuff up and put it back in our pocket Jesus. like that. Yes. Just like we ain't heard nothing. Let's come. I was shook up, bro. I was shook up. You shook me up, bro. Because you said judgment starts when? Today. Yes, sir. Today. Well, that's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I lost the week already. <laughs> Excuse me. No, time is passing. Yeah. And we can't get time back. You know, we can actually sleep on it if you want to. But the last thing you want is Jesus to roll up on you and your stuff ain't done. Right. Last thing you want is the Lord to roll up on your address. And you ain't in trip with you don't want Jesus to stop by your house and you in there cussing your wife out, want to bust upside the head and all this foolish stuff. No, 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 no. You don't want that. You don't want it. You don't want that. You know, we used to say, oh, I'll just take the whooping. Man, you can, you can decide to do wrong, but you do not decide the consequences. Oh, my mom used to be whooping me out. After a couple of days, I was like, I got it, Bob, I got it. <laughs> She put me till she get tired. Right. Right. I told you don't do that. And then you did that too. The other day, you thought I forgot. But you don't want the Lord to roll up on you and your stuff is messed up. Only a fool would invite an angry God to come up on me when I know my stuff ain't right. So my last point is I'm going to tell you this. Three things. Three things. Number one. We must admit that we're off course. That's point number one. As a people, we need to admit that we're off course. Uh, Jesus said in, in, in John 15, 16, he said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. You didn't come to God on your own. He pursued you. 
Young people just came in the room. If you know Jesus, you got Jesus in your heart, it's because he tracked you down. Yeah. It ain't because of your mom and your daddy. It's because Jesus has something for you. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. He had he 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 knew what he knew the promises that he had for your life. Yeah. Old people, same thing. Yeah. If you know the Lord, man, that was by grace that he found you. Because yeah. many of us he had to run us down. Yes, sir. We, was, yes, sir. we was enjoying sin. That's right. Like, I gotta get away. What? Oh no. Yeah. Oh. Wow. I ain't ready to stop that right now. Look, <laughs> Jesus, can you come back out there? I ain't even been with a woman yet. Hold up. Give me a couple more days. Right. Yeah, that's the foolishness that we had in our minds. Yeah. I heard somebody say they didn't want to go to heaven because they ain't even been to Hawaii yet. <laughs> so clearly heaven can't be better than Hawaii, right? <laughs> That's how the enemy got our minds twisted. See, we got to admit we are off course. See, because if we confess that we are off course, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we want to hold on to that thing. Jesus said, this is the condemnation that life has come, but men choose darkness rather than light because their sins, their, their deeds are done. You know, you got that thing that you love, you want to hold on to, but as long as you hold on to that thing, you can't accept the things that God's given you. You got to have open hands to get what God's got for you. We all do. Okay, point number two, we're almost to the end. It said we must wholeheartedly repent and ask God to help us to change our priorities. If all you worry about is how many likes you got on your account, or how many friends and uh, you know on liking your post and uh, all of this stuff. And you can get up and you can do all of this stuff on your internet stuff, but you ain't got no time to spend with the Lord. You got every app on your phone. You know how to operate every app on your phone. But if somebody asks you, do you have a Bible app on your phone? If your answer is no, uh -oh. or and I'll tell you something that you should challenge yourself with. You know, like these things, I like them. Because, like, it's got a thing where it tells me screen time. And I can see, like, if I've been on Netflix for eight hours in a day, and I didn't even open up a Bible app at all, it'll tell you. Oh! 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 It'll tell you. You know, see, because you say you love the Lord, but you say you follow with Jesus. But if you don't, App screen shows that you ain't even touched the word of God, but you don't been on porn sites, you don't been on all this other stuff. Somebody lying. Somebody lying. Somebody hypocriting around here. I know that ain't a word, but I'm, I'm gonna be a pastor right now. You hypocriting around here. Here's, no, the Holy Spirit has to convict us of where we at. And then so, so once we come to that realization, now we can wholeheartedly ask God to change our priorities. You know, I know you might ain't been doing all that. God knows. He knows everything. We naked before him. Yep. You ain't tricking God. No doubt. You can fool me most of the time, but you can't fool God none of the time. He already know what you got. He already know that some of y'all already gone. Y'all, some of y'all. Elvis has left the building for many of y'all. Some of y'all already down at the chicken shack ordering what you got to get. <laughs> Tell the truth. He does. Like, why don't just do hard work and wrap it up so I can go? You know? But God's walking through the churches. He's walking through the lampstands. He's examining every last one of us. Last point, I'm going to call it a day. We must prepare ourselves to do the work. Now, don't get it twisted. We don't work to be saved. We work because we are saved. Yeah. That, that's the subtle difference. But, you know, don't, don't get it in your mind like you're going to do something for God. You know, no. No. It's a privilege to be used by the Holy Lord. He don't need none of us. None of us. If he can make a donkey talk, surely he don't need me. <laughs> And you can put your own translation on that however you want to. Right. But God don't need you. It's a privilege to be used by the Lord. 
Right. You don't preach. Okay, so here's what I want to look at. I want you to listen to the last thing. First Timothy 4, 7 through 8, it says, Do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Verse 8 says, Physical training is good, but training in godliness is much better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. Some of us will go to the gym. Uh, nothing else to be seen. You know what I mean? And to look at them women as they, oh, I'm sorry. No, anyway, y'all ain't looking at them yoga pants. Like, uh -huh. you, know, uh, you women, y'all ain't looking at them in them shot, 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 shot. Somebody might be going to the gym to actually try to work out. Right. Feel y'all. Yeah. But, you know, physical exercise is one thing. You know, if you want to keep guns and all that, and I'm satisfied with my BBs and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, but, uh, I mean, if you got some health issues, you might want to go to the gym. Or yeah. we're talking about taking care of our bodies. That's, yeah. that's, that's a word for my sponsor. But the reality is, is exercising in godliness is so critical for yeah. your development. If you want to ascend to the standards of Christ, you got to let the Word of God dwell richly inside of you. You got to eat the Word. You got to, you got to, it should be like honey to you. You know, it should be it's, it, because out of that, out, out of indwelling yourself with the Word of God, now comes motivation. Now comes power. Now comes inspiration. You know, you see things with clarity. You know that that you know that you was confused about a minute ago. You know, I mean, like we was looking this morning, we was talking this morning. Like, there's people under the sound of my voice that still think smoking weed is cool. Yeah. When the Bible says that you are, your, your stomach is your God. Yeah. That you are living as an enemy of the cross. Yeah. You understand? But, you know, I got to have a blunt. When I get up, yeah. got to have a blunt before I eat. I need a blunt before I go to sleep. Y'all know that. <laughs> but uh, Jesus came to set you free. Yeah. Yeah. So why are we not walking in free? Why are we not walking in free? See, we got to exercise ourselves in God like this. That's a good place to close. Because if you really, sincerely want to be motivated to rise up to the standards of Christ, it starts with exercising yourself in God like this. I'm going to say this. If you want to run a marathon, we ain't going to even say the 26K. If you want to do a 13K, you better try to do five blocks before you try to do a 13K. Okay? You don't want to be out there passed out in the middle of the road and pour water on you and call it the EMT. You got to build up to that is what I'm saying. You know, I mean, I, I, I look at people that got that 26K on their car and like, Ooh, really? I, with a bicycle, I don't think so. <laughs> I like the walking stuff, though. I mean, I, I may do five, five, six miles a day. You know, I mean, seriously. According to my watch. You know, which tracks. <laughs> I may do three or four flights of stairs a day. I mean, that's part of my job. But uh, it, if you really want to, to build up some stamina, if you really want to have some spiritual guts, and some ability to stand up against the enemy. Because don't think Satan is no punk. Right. Excuse me for being blunt. But don't think he's weak. He's like a roaring lion. Yep. Seeking whom he may devour. Yes, you don't want to run up on him and you ain't spending no time with Jesus. Right. See, see, I mean, the Bible gives an account of these seven guys, seven sons of Sceva. Who their daddy was a Jew and an exorcist. Yep. So they was out there trying to exorcise people in the, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. <laughs> they didn't know it personally. That's like, you know, in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches. On, so in the name of Jesus who Rev 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 B been talking about. In the name of the Lord, the sister Trina been putting the oil on his foot. We cast out that demon. Boy, that demon a whoop them boys talking about. Sit them up. Sit them out of there butt naked. Wow. You know what he told them? He said, Jesus I know. Paul I heard of. But who is you? Who is you? You better be careful about what you're running up on. We in spiritual warfare right here. We in warfare. You can't be acting like you on vacay, baby. We on warfare. 
If you think the devil ain't real, you better ask somebody. He ain't playing. And he ain't no respect of a person. But you know what? He ain't to be feared because he ain't got no hell or no heaven to put you in. No, no. God is the one to be feared. Yeah. And he's walking through the lampstand. So you better be careful. Yes, sir. It's a wrap. Those are the church home. Yeah.